In this presentation, we will take a look at overhead costs. First, we want to take a look at the process for overhead, the process of recording overhead, the process of allocating overhead to jobs, it being a bit more complex than the allocation of direct labor. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it and direct materials. First, we're gonna set up a predetermined overhead rate. We'll talk more about the process for doing that, but this predetermined overhead rate will help us to assign what's in overhead to particular jobs. It'll help us move from overhead to particular jobs. We need to do it at the beginning of the process so that we can then use it in order to allocate overhead to jobs as we go through the current time period. We're then going to record actual overhead, actual overhead that we have during the process. Remember what actual overhead is. It's going to be the cost of anything that we can't apply to a job. So anything related to the manufacturing process that we cannot apply directly to a job, indirect materials, indirect labor, anything related to the warehouse that, warehouse that we can't apply directly to a job like depreciation, like, like utilities on the warehouse, then we're going to put that into overhead. Then we're gonna apply estimated overhead to specific jobs. Now note that these two may not be going in order. In other words, as we go through a time period, we're gonna be incurring overhead as we go, meaning we're gonna be paying for stuff, we're gonna be paying the utility bill in the factory, we're gonna be paying employees that are indirect employees that we can't apply to a particular job as we go. And we're also gonna be applying the estimated overhead to jobs as we go. So this, we may apply overhead to a job before we record all the overhead for a time period. If we're talking about a month, then we may be applying some overhead to the job, of course, before all the overhead is recorded because the month isn't over. We're going to be incurring overhead through the entire process. We're going to be applying overhead through the entire process. What we want to do is set up the predetermined overhead rate so that whenever we need to apply, we can do so. And that is not necessarily dependent on whether we have uh, recorded you know the actual overhead or all of it for a certain time period and then we're going to have to adjust the over or under applied overhead so as we'll see the estimate this is going to be an estimate for us to apply the overhead to the jobs it's not going to match our actual amount in overhead the actual cost that we have and therefore we will have a difference which will be under or over applied which we'll have to do something with uh, just to, to deal with that estimate at the end of the time period. So here's going to be the process that we will go through. So first, let's think about uh, the costs that we'll be dealing with. And note, I'm going to do this a little bit out of order because the costs that we deal with are going to be recorded and the actual costs will go together. And although we do this at the beginning, it's going to be applied directly to this process, us applying out the overhead. So first, I'm going to think about the actual costs because that's probably how you would think about how we would think about what would happen in terms of a GL account. We're going to have costs that will be incurred. We need to then allocate those costs to particular jobs. First, we'll think about materials. Now we're considering here the indirect materials. We've already looked at this at a prior presentation, but we want to just recap it here so that we know that here as we focus in on the overhead component, we see it here as well. When we think about the materials leaving uh, the materials account, and going somewhere else, somewhere to, towards production, once we start working on stuff, you would think we want to apply it to a particular job. And this is going to be direct materials, things that we said, hey, we want you know this wood if we're making guitars and we want to apply it to this particular job, and that's why. But if we have other materials, such as indirect materials like glue or something like that, that we're just going to take the, we're just going to say, hey, the warehouse needs more glue so, all the, so we can work on more guitars, then we're just going to put that in the middle of the warehouse and we're not going to assign it to to all these guitars. We don't know which one, which job it's going to be working on. So this account then is going to be indirect. So remember, we could have two accounts up here 
raw materials, we might try to track them differently. We might try to track the direct materials and then have another account for indirect. Or we might just group them all into raw materials. And then once we take them out, we reduce raw materials as we'll do here. And we'll record the ones that we cannot assign to a particular job. We don't have a requisition form. It's just a request from the warehouse in general or from the, from the uh, production department, the factory in general, then we'll apply to overhead. So it'll look something like this. We'll say that the factory overhead is what we're gonna apply to, and then uh, the raw materials is going down. So raw materials will be decreased, but we're not putting into work in process because we don't know which job, therefore it has to go into the factory overhead. So it'll look like this. We're focusing on this journal entry factory overhead is increasing going from zero up by 550 to 550 and the other side is bringing down raw materials which was at uh, 147.770 down by the the 550 to 147.220 so that's this account and this account we moved it from raw materials not to work in process yet we didn't know which job we had to move it first to the factory overhead we're starting to build up this account and that's why i'm doing this first we can see what's actually in there and then we'll apply it out. So we're going to say, okay, now there's 550 in there. I want it. Where do we want it eventually? We want to eventually put it there. I just don't know how because we cannot do that until we know which job to assign it to. So then we, the same thing was with direct labor. We already recorded this, but I just want to record it again just so we know where it is in terms of the overhead. So direct labor, if we're applying the timesheets, these are all timesheets that people that work in the warehouse and work in the production, in the factory. Uh, but we, these we can apply to a particular job. This is stuff that's in payroll that we could not apply to a particular job. So it's like the supervisor salary, the maintenance, anything that's in there that's not working on a particular guitar in our case. We don't know which person, which guitar to apply it to. It's going to apply to some of them, but we don't know which. So if we could apply them, this is part of the payroll that we applied up here. We're focusing in on this item that we cannot apply. And that's going to be going into factory overhead and credit wages payable. So again, this is like a payroll. This is like the payroll journal entry. You know, we're paying someone payroll. We're not dealing with all the all the other withholdings and whatnot here. We're just going to say this is straight uh, a simplified payroll journal entry. We're going to credit wages payable. You can think of cash. If we were crediting cash, we're paying somebody. And we're debiting factory overhead because they worked on the guitars. They worked on the jobs, but we don't know which one. So we couldn't put it into work in process. So that brings us to this point. Now we have 1,750 and you can, and you can note as we build up this factory overhead account, uh, we don't exactly know what it's comprised of. It's comprised of all these different things. Now we've got some indirect materials and some indirect uh, labor that we are putting into this account. Eventually we want it to go into work and process again, but we don't know uh, which job to apply it to. And that's going to be our problem we'll have to deal with. Then we're going to have all the other stuff, all the other stuff that is going to be included in the production of inventory that we don't know exactly which job it goes to. In other words, we're going to have indirect materials, indirect labor, and then we typically look at everything else that's not going to be part of materials and labor. And that's going to include anything that has to do with the factory. So in, in a book problem, anything that refers to the factory will typically be going to overhead uh, as opposed to work in process. And anything involved in the factory as opposed to the administrative office, we can think of the two buildings being separate, then will be will be applied, of course, to the factory overhead as opposed to being a period cost, being a cost that we're going to apply to um, just, just expensing it typically. And these are the ones that actually can be kind of confusing because, again, all the stuff that we apply to overhead right now are stuff that we often think of as expenses. All the stuff that we're talking about, really, direct material, uh, when we think about materials, especially when we think about wages, we often think of these are kind of expenses. We think of the debit side as being expenses typically, um, but that's really because of the matching principle, not just the nature of wages or the nature of the thing. So in this case, we're going to pick up anything that's going to be involved in the factory. We're going to include it in the inventory, but not to a particular job and therefore not to work in process, but to factory overhead. So if we had depreciation on the factory, on the factory equipment, we're going to say, okay, depreciation, what's normally the journal entry for depreciation? Normally, we credit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. And this time, however, we're going to credit accumulated depreciation still, but debit factory overhead. 
Now that probably looks really weird to many, you know, when we first look at that and we've just probably memorized the journal entry that says, depreciation is always recorded as a debit to depreciation expense, a credit to accumulated depreciation. And that's gonna be recording the decrease in the factory equipment and the, and the use that we've had over time. But why is that the case? Because usually the expense down here represents that we consume something in order to help generate revenue in that time period. We're allocating the cost of the equipment to when we used it, consumed it. In this case, we used it, but we didn't use it to help generate revenue. We used it to make inventory, an asset. So therefore we're kind of capitalizing. We're moving the use of that equipment to the cost of the asset. We will expense it when we'll expense it when we finally uh, sell the inventory in the form of cost of goods sold. So it's going to move to factory overhead. It's going to move to raw material. Uh, it's going to move to work in process and then finally to finished goods. And then we're going to finally sell it. That's when we'll have it. And then anything else like rent, if it's rent on the factory or utilities on the factory or insurance on the factory, these are all things that we might think, um, typically we think of, you know, an expense that we would have here. If it was rent expense, if it was rent on the office building and not the factory, then it would be an expense. But here it's going to be something that uh, is on the building, so on the, on the factory and therefore overhead. So this is where book problems often will kind of make up an account instead of just paying something like the utilities bill, they might make up an account called like payable, utilities payable, just to show us that just through the journal entry that this deals with utilities, that's why they're doing it. it but in practice, usually we would just pay cash. So in essence, if we, if we add these up, our journal entry is basically 1,006 plus the 250 plus the 1,000, that's gonna add up to 2,850. That's how much cash we're paying. Again, we probably pay with three separate checks here, but we're basically crediting cash for that amount. And then the debit, we would normally think, well, the debit should go to, to rent, pay our, our rent expense, utilities expense. And again, if it was monthly to insurance expense or prepaid insurance here, we're gonna say, no, we're, we're paying these uh, not in order to help generate sales in the current period. We're hoping it's going to help generate sales, but not until we sell the inventory sometime in the future. And therefore the debit's going to go to factory overhead. So we're going to put this into factory overhead. And again, it's going to, it's going to go up here. We are going to expense it, but not in the form of, we're never going to see utilities expense on the factory because the utilities expense is included in the inventory. And when we expense it, uh, it'll be in the form of cost of goods sold, which is an expense, not in the form of utilities expense. So any utilities we pay on the administrative office will expense them because we use the administrative office in order to help us generate revenue. It's a period cost. Any utilities expense on the factory, however, is going to be part of the inventory, which we'll put in the factory overhead. We're going to allocate finally to work in process. We'll finish that inventory and then we'll sell it, expensing it in the form of cost of goods sold so if we look at these journal entries then we're going to debit uh factory overhead here's factory overhead it was at 1750 we're going to increase it by 2500 to 4250 we're going to credit accumulated depreciation which was at uh 1053 crediting it making the the contra asset account the credit balance account go up by 2500 to 1055 500 that's what's on the trial balance. Then we're going to debit factory overhead by the 2,850. So here's the 2,850. So the 4,750 going up by 2,850 to 7,100. That being represented on the trial balance. And then the cash is going down from 418,000 by 2,850 to 450,150. And that uh, is going to be what's on the trial balance. So in essence, uh, we're, we're recording these, which again, normally we would think of as kind of expense type of transactions if it was a service company or a merchandising company, but because it's on the warehouse, all this, I mean, not on the warehouse, on the factory, uh, because it's part of the factory process, it's, in, it's going to be uh, included in an asset, capitalized as an asset first in factory overhead, because we don't know which job to post it to. We don't know where to post it to in job. If we did, it would go to work in process but we don't know which job it to apply it to. So we're gonna first put it into this bucket. So this bucket now, factory overhead, has all this stuff in it. Everything we think that should be included in the cost of inventory. 
but we don't know which inventory. Everything that should be included in the cost of a guitar, the cost of a construction job, but we don't know which construction job is here. Then we're going to allocate it some way. So we're going to have to use some basis to allocate this out. And how, how are we going to do that? What, why can't we just allocate it evenly? Because we have goods that are not the same. All of our stuff is different. If we have construction jobs, all the jobs are different sizes. Wouldn't be proper to allocate, you know, this cost evenly to the jobs because all, all the jobs are going to be different. So we have to basically estimate how much to allocate. And that's going to be our future project.